Thursday, we're joined by the man himself, John Macaroon, publisher of all lines, of course, host of the Detroit Sports Podcast, the ball knower, uh, giving us a dose of medicine here to preview not only the Lions game this weekend, but recap the one from last weekend. John, welcome to the show, my man. How you doing this morning? Oh, good to talk to everybody. Looking forward to talking about the Detroit Lions. Guys, we have to acknowledge there's a new godfather in Detroit. Her name is Sheila Hemp. She's coming <laughs> to collect her money. The Lions are good, so fork over the cash or else. Yeah, uh, you know what, Sean? I know we've been getting calls on people uh, talking about the ticket prices. Hey, yesterday's price is not today's price, John. Uh, it, after that Bears game, and now we're after that Broncos game, hey, you know, the prices are going to keep increasing. Uh, there's not, no doubt about that. I want to ask you, though, John, your thoughts, and just quickly, we'll, we'll go through kind of recap what happened on Saturday, not Sunday, the Broncos game. Uh, you had Sam Laporta show out, Jameer Gibbs show out, and I tweeted this out just with the rookies. They're, they're involved in this. The Lions offense potentially could have 2,000-yard receivers and 2,000-yard backs, and you sprinkle on that, John, a quarterback – who could pass for 4,000 yards? Like, how insane is that? First time ever in NFL history. Yeah, what a performance by the Lions. Clearly a motivated football team that wanted to play a, a much better brand of football. A lot of motivation, obviously, for Dan Campbell and his squad against Sean Payton. The Lions not only won the game, they kicked the Broncos' ass. So I just thought that it was a complete performance. Obviously, when the defense forces a turnover, I think we all were loving Isaiah Bugs rumbling, stumbling down the field. It was just a great night. A lot of fans that messaged me and friends said that it was actually a lot more fun being at Ford Field than Monday Night Football just because it was such a complete game. And you look at it, and, oh, did someone tell you guys last week that uh, Russell Wilson was a poor man's Jared Goff? I wrote at All Lions... <laughs> A bold prediction that Jared Goff would toss four touchdown passes, maybe even five, Ooh. if it was an exceptional day. Who told you that? That was me. And I got to <laughs> sit there and listen to weirdos in the chat telling me, oh, anybody can do this. Anybody can get <laughs> throw out stuff from their couch. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Put it in print. That's what I did. Yep. And I obviously looked at the matchups and uh, clearly understood the Lions were going to play a much better brand of football. And look, Clearly, you know what the medicine is for an ailing defense? Uh, Russell Wilson, a quarterback that's just going to not be is mobile, but not mobile enough to kill you. And all in all, the Lions put it together, and it was a convincing win, a statement win that gave a, uh, everybody a lot of confidence. You nailed it, John. Yes. So speaking of that win, does a win like that, a 42-17 to win over the Broncos, where the Lions played probably their most complete football game of the year, I would say definitely their most complete football game of the year, does it give you more confidence that they can do something like go into Dallas and win and maybe win multiple playoff games? the Lions will be in the playoffs. So I'm definitely curious how the Lions shake out uh, this week in a key matchup in the division. Look, you look at this football team and what the game against the Broncos will show you is if they play to their potential, if they play well, if they play clean football, force turnovers, if Jared Goff and the offensive line are in sync, yes, this football team can compete with anybody. That kind of performance really gives you a lot of hope and confidence. The question marks are there. But I think obviously the first step is secure the first home playoff game. And then here's, here's the thing, guys. Here's the blessing. If the Lions do win out, number two seed, you could have more than one playoff game at Ford Field. And I think the environment at Ford Field really lends itself for the Lions playing well. Jared Goff loves playing well. But guys, I think you guys brought it up and everybody that knows football understands. A healthy Detroit Lions offensive line sets up the offense to do a lot of big things. It lets Jared Goff play well. Right. It sets up the offensive weapons. A healthy offensive line really makes this Detroit Lions team purr. And so we just got to make sure that Frank Ragnow, Taylor Decker, Jonah Jackson, Graham Glasgow, and Panay Sewell, if they stay healthy, big things ahead for the Lions. And, and speaking of the offensive line, and Herman Moore tweeted this out because he was on heavyweights the other day, just kind of talking about Jameer Gibbs and, and how he benefits, and him and David both benefit from this offensive line. And there's no doubt about that. But where's the line for you, John, where it's Jameer, how talented Jameer is? He's averaging five and a half, whatever it is, yards per carry. What's 
Where would you put the credit? Like for me, I, I think Jameer, once he gets to the second and third level, obviously that's Jameer, but you can't discount what this offensive line means. You could argue a guy like Jameer could be a top 10 back, but with this offensive line, he's he could play even better than that, John. So where are you at with the offensive line versus the running back talent? How, how do you split the, the uh, credit there? Uh, yeah, I think that obviously you give credit to the offensive line. Uh, obviously it starts there because it allows Jared Goff to do his thing. Now, but you look at it, Boy, Jameer Gibbs, this is the player that everybody wanted to see. An explosive runner, can open things up, speed, vision, can definitely help out Jared Goff and David Montgomery. So I look at it like you give the offensive line 55% credit and, and Jameer Gibbs 45% for his development. But boy, guys, Lewis Riddick from ESPN comes out and he has a bold statement thinking that next year Jameer Gibbs could be in conversations for league MVP. What do you think about That's that, John? How much, what do you think about yeah, that statement? I mean, I, I, it's, it's interesting because when you look at a player of Gibbs' talent, he can do a lot of things. And, and remember, a rookie, he can uh, definitely get uh, more involved in the passing game, can definitely be in, it, with the Lions adding maybe a lineman, a young lineman should they replace Jonah Jackson. You recognize that the, the, the growth potential is still there, and you're just scratching the surface of a player that can be explosive in this offense. And I think that's why that's what Dan Campbell and the front office wanted to build. That's why Panay Sewell was a staple in that first draft. When you have a good offensive line, it opened things up for the play caller and Ben Johnson, opened things up for Dan Campbell, and it, it lets Jared Goff look like a top five quarterback. And then it just allows guys like Jameer Gibbs who are naturally talented uh, to, to evolve and learn and be a big, a big producer in this offense. Yes. Um, John, I want to look ahead to the next matchup at Minnesota. What is something that the Vikings do or something or some things the Vikings do that can give the Lions some trouble this Sunday? Yeah, this is an interesting contest. Brian Flores loves to blitz. He's looking at Jared Goff right now. He's got his picture on the dartboard, and he's like, we can do this. Daniil Hunter, obviously, world-class pass rusher. You look at it and you say, okay, the Minnesota Vikings defense loves to blitz, loves to come from different angles. And if they're able to, I don't think they will at the, at the high rate that they have been, but they're able to, you know, pressure the quarterback at a high rate. They've been playing a little bit better brand of football. What concerns me a little bit more when you look at the Vikings on tape, they got two world-class offensive weapons. Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson are two elite wide receivers that can even make Nick uh, Mullins look like a competent quarterback. Against the Lions secondary that's kind of shuffling and mixing in pieces, I'm curious how they distribute the football. I asked Dan Campbell about Jordan Addison and how, how, how he looked at this young wideout in the draft process, and look, he's getting targeted. He's got nine touchdowns. His average catch is over 13 yards. So I look at it, and obviously Justin Jefferson has been dealing with injuries. I'm curious how the Lions defense is going to shake out against two of the premier offensive weapons in the league. And now the, the, the biggest thing for me, John, defensively for the Lions, because we, we watched the, the Nick Mullins uh, kind of debut there and got to see him in a real in a full game against the Bengals. He threw for 300 yards, you know, two TDs. Like you said, you had Jordan Addison play a hell of a game. Justin Jefferson returned. TJ Hawkinson got his as well. But the thing is, the two interceptions, and it, it should have been a third, and it should have been a game closer there, a pick six for, by Jermaine Pratt, I believe, that was called back. So the one thing you can say about Nick Mullins is he can give the ball up. He can turn the ball over. And this has been a Lions defense that last week just kind of got back to getting the ball, you know, taking the ball away. And I think, John, that's that's super important for a defense. If you're giving up a lot of yards, the Broncos kind of laid that out for everybody. If you're giving up a lot of yards, you got to take the football away. How important is it for this defense to keep that up and continue to get takeaways, especially from a guy like Nick Mullins who's prone to giving it up? Yeah, you could argue it's uh, the the key to the game is the Lions defense. You could say, you know, the success, the momentum that the Lions can build is predicated on this defense. Look what it did when Isaiah Bugs and uh, Ifatu Milifanu forced that strip fumble and then you get an opportunity to have extra offensive possessions. The Lions, I think that when you look at the way in which they play football, ball control, taking shots, I think that the Lions now when you look at it, they have so many offensive weapons. As many times as you can get Jared Goff the football, the, the more advantageous it's going to be. This Look, I think that if the Lions can start ahead, playing from ahead, very key. I think that the Vikings, obviously being a desperate football team, knowing what they got to accomplish to still stay in the division, they know that they're desperate and they got, they're got they going to put forth the, their best effort. 
Last year, the Lions obviously looked for a performance in Carolina. It didn't go well. But I think what gives what should give Lions fans solace, this game is indoors. The Lions know they can win the division for the first time in 30 years. There's a lot of motivation to play well, to play at the highest level. And this defense, definitely now, they got their swagger back. CD Deuce is back in that locker room while he might not be out on the field. Oh, my goodness. First day back trying to pick fights out at practice, doing his thing, calling out reporters like myself. He's got this swagger and this attitude that I think is going to bolster that defense and make everybody around him better. The emergence of Ifatu Melifanwu playing alongside Kirby Joseph. And you realize, okay, if you can just weather the storm and be able to execute late, the Lions have a real solid chance, in my opinion, of winning this football game. And, and look, again, like you guys have said, if Aiden Hutchinson can just take his game up a notch, really get to Nick Mullins, make it a long day for an inexperienced quarterback, look, it could be an opportunity for the Lions, again, to force some turnovers on defense. And speaking of C.D. Deuce, John, you had you got to talk to him. He kind of shut you down a little bit, asking a, a very, very integral question. Just, hey, how big of a threat are the Lions? And he looked at you like you're stupid, John. So I want you to kind of give your uh, response on that and just how it was talking to C.J. And, and the likelihood he plays, not maybe not this week, but how quick they can get him back in this lineup. But your experience with, with C.J., I know you wrote about it. Yeah, absolutely. It was great. Look, I'm not afraid to ask any question that comes into my mind. And clearly, guys, look, I could have maybe phrased it a little bit better. But look, I'm back in the scrum. I was talking to Jared Goff, and then I see the media scrum happening with CD. I'm like, okay, it's just me for my outlet. So I had to go over there, and I'm behind Brad Galley, and he's a tall dude. So I'm back in the corner, and obviously the Lions are getting back a few uh, defensive pieces. So I said, look, obviously, guys, I don't know that the Lions are a threat. I do not know that. I have a question. My big question mark is what can this defense accomplish when the pressure is the highest? Right. Like in the regular season, it's, it's one brand of football, but in the postseason, it's a completely different brand of football. So I just asked, okay, with James Houston and Aleem McNeil and you back, do you guys think that you're a threat in the postseason? Now, he could have gave an elaborate answer, but his, his response, I have never had a problem with a player and how they respond to a question. My job is to ask and his job is to respond. Now, here's the best part. Now, I look and I'm like, oh boy, uh, I know that people are gonna gravitate toward him saying, geez, that's a dumb question. And I go online and I see some reporters highlighting it. Here's the best part about being me. Thank you guys so much for giving me a platform, but still many people were like, God, Tim Twentyman asked the dumbest questions. So I still get to fly under the radar <laughs> and all the hate goes to somebody else. It's wild. No, John Macaroon asked the question. I definitely understood. Um, it could have been asked better, but I never have a problem. I never take it personally. I love the blessing of being able that they, they let a guy like me into that building. But my job is to ask questions that come to my, and the blessing for me running the outlet is I can ask whatever I want. Right. In, in any sense, what comes to my mind. So that was the question that I asked. That's the answer he gave. Uh, he, he doesn't pull no punches. But uh, I'm not scared of asking anybody anything. Um, when, you, when you start to have fear in the media business, you should get out because mm -hmm. it's subjective. And you could catch somebody at a totally different time. And, he, and still, he said, you know we're a threat, baby. Okay, that's the confidence that he's got. But guess what? I put him on fraud alert. If you don't deliver there's going to be a guy that's going to type some things about your defense. See, John, that's why Ooh, you're one of the best at what you do. Let's go. Look, people take notes with that, too. John, <laughs> listen, I don't know if you have as big a balls as Dan Campbell, John, but listen, you you may or may not have a wheelbarrow you carry around with you. I don't know, John, but you're a hell of a well, – you, you're great at what you do. Um, I want to say appreciate you for joining the show. You guys, if they do lose in the, in the playoffs and, and John's going to – Put, be putting his articles out. Go check him out. Go read his stuff. You can follow him, uh, Detroit uh, Podcast, on uh, X now, of course. And, and, of course, you can read all his recent stuff. But thanks, John, for joining the show. Of course, he's here every single Thursday. We appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much. I've always felt like I could contribute something to a show if I ever got an opportunity to have a weekly spot. You guys afforded me that opportunity. I'm very grateful for it. It does not go lightly to a guy like me who's scratching and clawing, still trying to get people to understand what I do and how I do it. This holiday season is going to be busy. It's going to be emotional. But it's going to be worth it. With McCormick, it's going to be great. Very Merry Christmas and uh, go Lions. I think the opportunity to kick the Vikings ass is there. And if Jared Goff plays well, 
Look out, baby. I'm on Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta. Let's go. The Lions have an opportunity to make some special things happen. Yeah, we're lucky. To, you, we're lucky to have you, John. Yep. We appreciate you. Hey, I got. John, I got to come on that podcast, John. I'm not even lying to you. I got to come on that podcast soon. We got. We got to do something together. There's no doubt about that. But uh, appreciate you, John. Again, you can catch him every single Thursday. He's here on the Morning Overt Show. This is his home. Uh, his weekly segment here. Let's go to break. When we come back, we'll get into more Lions. We'll get into some of the things John kind of talked about. And one thing he did kind of. Uh, kind of you know explain or get into detail about is Brian Flores and I want to bring the defense up for the Vikings some of the matchups the offense.